Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Friday edition of the Daily Friends Show. And as you can see, I am standing in for the venerable and measured Nicholas Lorimer. Um, so here we go. And uh, in a week that has the truth that a day is a long time in South, in South African politics and public, public affairs. I would like to welcome my colleagues, Terence Corrigan. Terence, thanks for joining us. Welcome. And my other colleague, Juan Mlondi Mluli, who is becoming increasingly a font of IRR knowledge, good sense, and opinion. Welcome, Mlondi. Now, the, 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 the subjects that have really written themselves for this program, so and we're going to start with the obvious is the the death of uh, of Marcus Euster. Now, Marcus Euster is emblematic of probably private sector fraud legend that is unlike all other. He ha he was responsible for at least being the, the the perpetrator. He had to be assisted by others in executing the biggest fraud in private in, in in the private sector in South Africa ever. Um and that is known colloquially known as the 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 Steinhoff case. And basically what what he really did uh, somebody uh, they've described it as South Africa's Enron and it was a result of uncovering a fraud um, of such magnitude uh, that ultimately led to his suicide by shooting himself yesterday. Now, Yuster was very much in the in in the mold of I think of the big fraudsters, the the, the Bernie Madoffs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, in that through so circuitous accounting methods, um, he managed to have Steinhoff, which had gone from literally to in South Africa under Euster, he, he was originally a small furniture dealer in the middle of rural nowhere, and he turned South Africa into uh, Steinhoff, rather, sorry, with the association of Steinhoff in, in Germany into. Uh, I think Sora's frozen. I think what she's saying is that you, um, you turn that into, you know, a fairly significant empire. Uh, did holdings around the world, uh, uh, mostly in Europe, but also there were um, interests in America and in Australia and New Zealand, and then a despicable series of uh, um, yeah, of sort of fraudulent loans, losses unreported, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Rondi, what's your take on this? Yes, I mean, the Steinhoff matter is a pretty sad one. You know, I've always felt that it's a, you know, it was a sad you know, uh, thing that took place because people were actually uh, screwed over, you know, by Steinhoff. So I think that they've been delaying to get their justice. You know, their justice has, has been uh, delayed. And, you know, it's only in Germany where we've seen, like, you know, some, uh, uh, you know, uh, some progress like in Germany but it's but but in South Africa it's been quite slow so but I mean uh, in the past few days or like in the past week we've seen that you know some progress has been made in the country to try and ensure that those that are that, to ensure that those that are responsible are brought to book so yes you know it's kind of interesting but I mean like with obviously like with Marcus's death, you know, that that's quite sad because I feel that he had a lot to account for so he chose to take the easy a route out so yeah that's a sad and also but i'm but, but, uh but i mean like on a more uh personal side i'm no i'm sad for his family as well because you know it's not nice to actually lose a family member you know the guy had kids he had a wife so also his you know also his family is now uh a, a, a suffering as well and you know that's a bit sad thank you for holding up by and while the public sector fraud denuded me of uh power and uh and internet in general. <laughs> hello, hello. Um, 
in a way, the the Eusta saga is, as I say, it's classic. It's almost Shakespearean in nature. Um, it's 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 the to mix my ancient Greek mythology with with Shakespeare and the South African um, the South African zeitgeist. Icarus flew too high to the sun, um, and eventually, even someone who who was as smart and as really really smart and as ambitious and as favoured as 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 a, as Euster was in the South African firmament, um, I probably wasn't as um, surprised by his by his uh, suicide as I think many people are. And as we mentioned off 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 screen offline, um, one of the leading causes of suicide for men is financial destruction and having been particularly when you've been your 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 personality your status has been tied into your prowess your fun your ability your prowess in the financial sector the fall to the point where suddenly with the fsca fine against him and the finding against him of over 400 million rand plus their assistance to the hawks to make the case the very complex case against him the point was reached where the only way out was death, and it didn't. And it, 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 and one knows with suicide, or one knows, yeah, with suicide, that it's not whoever it affects, whoever it hurts, family, friends, your co-accused. It's it's not it's it's not what enters into the mind of the person who does the deed. Um, so it's in a way it's. It goes, it, it goes with the whole turf of the whole story. Terence? Well, it's interesting you mentioned uh, Shakespeare and uh, uh, mixing your metaphors. Um, I remember when I, when I was in matric, and this is going back several decades, uh, one of our set works was Othello, and I remember his quote, reputation, reputation, reputation. Oh, I have lost my reputation. I have lost the immortal part of myself and what remains is bestial, for reputation is an idle and most false imposition, oft got without merit and lost without deserving. I think, you know, that explains why you have um, uh, someone like um, uh, someone, uh, someone like Eustace uh, uh, taking, the, taking the route out he did, and also I understand Brett Kebble, the so-called assistant suicide. Uh, people who have built their um, built their lives um, as avatars of legitimate business. You know, these aren't people for whom uh, you know, aren't gangsters for whom uh, uh, for whom death is 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 a part of the transaction. But these are people who are fated and lauded. Um, Steinhoff was Europe's second largest um, uh, furniture uh, uh, furniture group after IKEA. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he was, um, uh, in some ways, the 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 epitome of what uh, of, of of what South African business was supposed to be. Not just confined to a southern tip of Africa, but um, uh, uh, but able to 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 stamp its mark um, elsewhere. Luxury goods, um, and uh, you know, to to find that this was all built on a built in a rotten house of cards. You know. Unfortunately, this is something that is that um, uh, that is far from uncommon in, in, in the business world. You know, you go back to the collapse of uh, of Bearings Bank. You remember, um, uh, you know, also uh, the transactions between uh, uh, between its British headquarters and its Singaporean office, where uh, you know losses were just sort of being quietly tucked away in an errors account, or you know, which they had sort of relabeled. So. Not, not even their their their, their auditors, uh, you know, were able to see this. And the chap was literally able to come up with a with a supporting documentation by cutting things out and sticking them on, and then faxing the 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 um, uh, the uh, you know it was it it was obscene. I think that you know we need to this is this is an area where I think. Um, <laughs> There is something that requires very, very, very careful and measured uh, introspection, um, particularly by organisations like ourselves that are generally quite sympathetic to 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 uh, to market economics and to the importance of business. 
um, that this, you know, impo- pe- people's ego and recklessness impose enormous costs on 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 ordinary people, not just the, uh, you know, the, the the creditors or the employees of these firms, but also, you know, a large chunk of pension money was was um, uh, was invested there. You know, this is actually something where where South Africa um, has made a has an international reputation, the quality of its corporate governance. Um, you know, view. I think the the um, uh, World Economic Forum ranks South Africa's corporate governance uh, regime as the best in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, these things still um, uh, still do happen. Mm. Um, I think the, one of one of the instructive things, and I mean, particularly there was a sort of crowing when it happened um, by the in the public sector that you know fraud is not a, a you know a, a state capture public sector thing only. It can be the dreaded private sector capitalism, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Can also be, you know, look here we've got Steinhoff, uh, you know, we've had the Brett Kevils, etc. of the world as well. Um, but what is m- most interesting here is that uh, the Financial Services uh, Conduct Authority, which is an independent body, it did two things. It one is it investigated, made a, 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 a distinct finding against Steinhoff and fined him. And more than that, it's become established that it has given assistance to the Hawks, who all our investigative authorities are under huge pressure, the manpower, the the skills needed to uncover something as big as this, whether it be private or public. It's taken seven years, but it's a bit like, you know, I suppose uh, becoming, uh, 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 you know, losing your fortunes. You know, it happens slowly and then... It crashes, and and essentially this has crashed. Mundi, to what extent, what sort of message should both the Steinhoff's, the, those who aided Steinhoff, the private sector, and the public sector should take out of the rise and very sudden fall to the point of demise of of of, uh, of Marcus Euster? What what message should people be be picking up from that? Because I think. It's salutary in the most profound way. Yes. So basically, this uh, sends out a, this uh, sends out a strong message, you know, to say that uh, if you corrupt, you will get caught. Because if you look at the private sector uh, corruption, you know, I mean, if you look at uh, state capture, my apologies, you would see that uh, state capture would have not been possible without the help of the you know, of the private sector, you know, because uh, the companies that were involved in uh, facilitating uh, a state capture. Were companies in private, no, uh, were you no, know, uh, were private companies like the most of the companies that were involved, you know. Yes, like we do have some SOEs as well, but I mean, there were some, uh, uh, uh private companies that were involved. So I guess that this just, uh, uh you know, uh, sends out a strong, a message, you know, uh, to say if you're corrupt, you will get caught and you will be dealt with. So I say that, you know, uh, this is a good message, you know, uh, because this is culture of, you know, I can say a culture of a corruption you know in the country so people are finding it more easy to you know to you know uh, to you know uh, to be corrupt if i can put it, you know if i can put it that way because they know that uh you know uh, people can steal funds and they can you know and they and they can get away with it so i guess that this incident with uh you know with uh steinhoff has actually helped you know to show look uh the F- fca is kind of serious if you want to be a uh, corrupt and be, you know and be fraudulent you will get caught and you will be dealt with yeah, no, I, 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 think, I think that's right. And I think particularly, I, sorry, Terence, to interrupt there, um, and perhaps you, you can go to this as well, is that um, used to committing suicide, it's, it, it's not something we've seen in the uncovering of the great frauds in the public sector. Could this, could this change the, 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 the sort of zeitgeist of those who, are now, who have been accused? Of massive fraud in the public sector. Well, uh, I um, I would I would wait and see. You. My my intonation is 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 probably not. Look, in order to prosecute a case like this, it's extremely um, you know it's 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 
it's difficult. You know, you need you need particular expertise um, to show to show where the link where, where the links go. You know, it's why you can have a um, a sort of t- uh, TV reality show about you know uh, cops on the beat, but not the forensics behind it. You know, they you they, they you have to have a documentary that follows them over you know <laughs> over over an extended period of time. Um, my my sense of it, though, is that I, 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 I hear what Londi is saying, but I think that, um, unfortunately, South Africa is, 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 is still at a position where uh, it is by no means certain that one will be, that one will be caught. Um, and I think the problem, uh, the problem in the public sector is that it's far more, uh, it's far more prone to, to, to political protection. Um, Look, I think that uh, that if this does ser- does serve as a salutary lesson, it's that um, there is no inherent purity in private business. Um, mm. People can be, you know, uh, uh, people wanting to make dishonest money can make it wherever wh- wherever the opportunity arises. Um, Steinhoff, cho- you know, chose to do it with a with a large multinational um, uh, a company, uh, um, uh, Marcus Uster. Um, so yeah, you know, this is, uh, and I think that there, that there, there, there is also, I think what, what Londi referred to, um, significant problem is what is what's known as collusion where private businesses and the public sector and politicians, you know, pool their, pool the resources to extract from the rest of us. That is a, that is a very, very, um, uh, severe, severe problem. And this is something that I have pointed out in some of the things I've I've written. We need a productive and constructive relationship between between business and government. That's an asset for every co- for, for every country. When it becomes conflictual, it's dysfunctional. When it becomes collusive, it's dangerous. I think I think that's the perfect point at which to move on to our on to our next subject. Um, and this is the and I'm going to quote. I'm going to give a quote here. Madam Minister, you cannot expect to be my partner, cheat on me, and be upset when we consider stop pay, stop paying your rent. Now, this is the comment from Repu- from the, the Republican um, who was a co-sponsor of the bill to reconsider and um, reevaluate the bilateral relationship between America, the USA, and South Africa, and it's been. Really, in coming in the in the fact of South Africa's very clear shift to to the east, um, Russia, China, Iran, um, a very very distinct shift away from the West, um, in a way that is so has been so unsubtle. It, 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 it's 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 probably. One of the extraordinary feats of the ANC government uh, currently, and the bill is intended to, with bilateral support, meaning both Democrats and uh, and Republicans, is to set up a process whereby the president, uh, President Biden, has to establish I think we've lost Sarah again. Um, okay, yeah, so <laughs> if I can, if I if I can pick that up, it's to um, my my understanding is that it's intended to establish a, um, a sort of committee or investigation to look at uh, America's relations with South Africa and, if possible, to um, uh, to downgrade them. Now, there's concerns this could mean. Uh, Sarah, are you back? Want to carry on? I am back, and uh, it's like it, it's indescribably annoying um not just for me and not just for the <laughs> for our poor audience but for flow um sorry let me pick up just because i've ended up in that sort of nether universe of no sound um but essentially the what what's what's become clear from the what's happened in the house is that there is a recognition that is not the south african people who should that that America is looking at it is it is the government. Um, there is no intention to take away certainly 
health, the, the contributions to health and, a and particularly HIV AIDS that the, the, the USA has given us. And it may or may not in, in the long run affect a goer. But the quote I gave suggests that you do not, you do not affect the relationship However you feel ideologically or for whatever, ultra, you know, I was going to say altruistic, but I actually meant sort of self-interested reasons the ANC may have of shifting completely away from an American zone of interest, and particularly in something like a go where we had no right specifically to be there in the first place, and sort of move over to the autocracies that you and I would probably assume are not necessarily going to be in the South African public's interest. And the, the visit of Pandor to America to rescue the situation, um, certainly on the face of it, without yet delving deep into, in, into the nuts and bolts, showed a diplomatic blind spot that she was ill-prepared to, 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 to deal with. It required a level of skills and subtlety and understanding of diplomacy that I'm not sure our minister had. Terence, am I being unfair to our minister? Should I be more sympathetic no. to what you had? Look, I think that um, I, 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 I would uh, just ju just add a couple of um, add a couple of writers. First of all, I don't think go, I don't think something like PEPFAR would be off the table. There have there has been some 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 suggestion over the years that uh, that this is a particular piece of uh, um, a piece of largesse. I think the other the other thing is that it's very difficult to apply pressure on a government, whether that's democratic or autocratic, that doesn't um, uh, impact um, uh, impact the population. That's an ul ul ultimately all governments have that sort of influence over their populations in some measure, and any pressure applied is likely to be to 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 be passed on. So you know that's just that's just the way it is. Um, I think what. What what I would say is that um, you know you can go back to back to Thabo Mbeki's presidency. There's been a there's been a strong strain of 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 anti Western hostility. That's just who the ANC is. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's become uh, that's become amplified recently. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that Zuma, Jacob Zuma, wasn't particularly interested in well very in anything really. And he kind of allowed the um, allowed some of the most ideologically rigid and um, uh, uh, fanatical elements to 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 commandeer uh, to commandeer that. Now, um, I think it, it it's hardly unheard of for countries that have that 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 have severe conflicts of interest, whether it's ideological or geostrategic, to be able to. Maintain productive, if not cordial, relations. Um, you know, during um, a, a country, a country like Chile is often is often tended uh, tended quite to the left. Um, under George W. Bush, they were um, uh, they were very critical of American American foreign policy, but they managed to come up with a with a free trade uh, um, agreement with with um, uh, with the United States. Um, I mean, America has had severe uh, um, frustrations and vice versa with France. France is a sort of, in a sense, a key ally. Um, America and China kind of need each other, you know, a lot more than than um, uh, than than they may admit. What the problem for South Africa is? It's allowed um, ideology to 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 run riot without the nuance to actually to actually manage any of this. Um, you know, it's 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 it. I would say that it's logical for your foreign minister to go, you know, to go and visit a interlocutor country with which there are stresses to try and try and um, uh, try and rescue those. But I think it'd be somewhat more convincing if she hadn't tub thumbed at a public meeting that people must go and protest out that outside that embassy. This is not something for a for a, for a foreign minister to do. Um, you know. Um, under under Tabo and Becky, um, and you know, I think there is a great deal that you know uh, negative that 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 could be said. He at least understood that this was a this was a very significant country that that South Africa had to have some sort of uh, uh, some sort of uh, uh, modus op uh, modus vivendi with, and you know, you were able to stand up at the UN and damn American policy in the Middle East. 
but then also to 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 host uh, George W. Bush for a you know for 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 what seemed like a very cordial uh, cordial meeting. I think those sort of whatever was behind was behind that has gone. Um, mm-hmm. Now you know it, it. I think it often it often defaults to some of the most some of the crudest most binary. Um, uh, ideological impulses, and um, I, I just don't. Uh, you know, I would I would say that that um, while South Africa, let's say, has the tool, you know, has the has the resources and the toolbox overall to 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 make uh, to make that worse work, um, it just doesn't. It just doesn't have the have the diplomatic skills to do so. <coughs> Excuse me, Mar- Mlondi, um is it a case that in being sort of bolstered by its BRICS participation um, and the warm embrace by the, shall we call them, those more auto- autocratically in, in, inclined as countries, um, that the the ANC is basically play, resting on something where it feels it 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 gives it it it's given it the and its involvement in over or over the ICJ decision the ICJ application it's given a sense of an importance that South Africa had lost and it has lost because from a from a local point of view the, the ANC has has does not have a good electoral story to tell um, so it it kind of it's a bit like Marcus used to it's a sort of exercise in delusion. And it really has not understood that it is playing with the big boys. Yes, Sarah. I mean, I totally agree with that. I mean, uh, the ANC's uh, ICJ application, you know, I have my views on this and they're very strong. I do feel that the ANC is, well, like, you know, like with regards to that, rather, was trying to really try to garner support, especially uh, heading towards the, you know, to, you know, to, you know, uh, towards the country's. Uh, I, uh, elections so but I, I don't really think it'll play that much you know on the outcomes you know because people are just fed up you know of the ANC but with regards you know uh, to the ANC's ties with the East I think that uh Terence has really uh outlined that uh, uh properly and I and I just want to focus on you know you know on all of this like how you know how it could impact the you know like the ordinary man in the street because if the U.S. Uh, says look we're now taking away a goa that's going to really really impact the you know the you know the ordinary you know the the ordinary you know, south african which isn't really i, I can say that um, many people are, are you know on the streets do not care about us you know about you know about us you know about a south africa uh, you know uh, siding with the east and you no know, like and you know like in all honesty i think that most south africans would, would would actually prefer them siding with the West because the West, uh, you know, uh, provides, you know, uh, the poorest of the poor with a support, as you know, like, uh, you know, like, uh, with the Goa and uh, you know, and that kind of stuff. Like, we have like a pandemic of AIDS in the country, for example, and you know, with the US, assist, you know, like with the US, uh, with the US assistance, you know, it's the you know, it's the ordinary man on the street that gets some benefits. So. Uh, yeah, so I really think that the government is putting us in jeopardy. I mean, in jeopardy, all, all because of ideological uh, uh, stances and points proving that the ANC is trying to make. If, if uh, I, if, yeah. if I may, just you know what what sort of I think uh, nuanced diplomacy looks like. India um, is in BRICS. It all it's also involved with uh, you know security arrangements with America at came countering China. Um, mm. It is able to criticize the conduct of, of, of the war in Gaza, but also damn Hamas as, a ter- as, as terrorists on October the 7th. Um, they have not taken a strong stand on Ukraine because they are, because they are dependent on Russian, on Russian energy. Um, you know, and they're managing, what, 4, 5, 6% growth a year. Mm. Uh, you know, I just think India actually, act, act, actually has a plan. Yeah, um, and, that, I think know, that's the issue. Yeah, you can, you can, you know, in fact, there was a, um, I remember reading a really interesting article about um, uh, about is, uh, India's relations with Israel, about how they had sort of reversed this, uh, the, the, the uh, post-independence course and saying that they were hosting uh, the Israeli prime minister at the time. 
And apparently the place where he spoke six weeks later, they hosted the, they hosted the president of Iran. You know, they're quite, quite prepared to talk to talk to whomever, which is, I think, where, we, where South Africa should be. But if you are, like, telling people to go and protest against certain, you know, <laughs> against certain countries, and you're the foreign minister, you've lost the plot. Mm. Um, given the fact that this episode has been bedeviled, um, I'm not going to go on to the third topic. I just want to raise the issue since uh, I am in control. Uh, and it really relates to South African, the, the, the Department of International Affairs itself. And that is the fact that if there's been one thing that's been relatively consistent of the last 30 years, the conduct of our foreign policy, our diplomacy, um, the quality of our diplomats um, has is probably not a lot better than it was in 1994. Um, and I know, Terence, this is an issue that you know you've you've thought about and written about um, a, a lot. And might that not be just the fact that it's it, it's it's sort of emblematic of the ANC as a ruling party's failure to understand the outside world. There's almost a naivety that allows mm. it to yeah, perform it's, 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 diplomatically. Yeah, I think I think part of part of what you're seeing is is is, is a mindset that essentially views the entire world through a particular through a particular prism and can't can't step out of that. And this is, I think, where a country like India actually is able to do that. Um, and then play, you know, play one off against the other. But the other thing is, you know, you say uh, not, not much better than 1994. I wonder whether it's um, uh, uh, whether it's not worse. And I'll say, and and I'll say this: um, the foreign service then was was a lot smaller, and they had a you know vastly more restricted uh, and in some ways quite difficult set of um, uh, a set of tasks. But I can also tell you this: that um, people. People who um, enter the foreign, uh, the the apartheid foreign service, would uh, you know advance slowly up the ranks, and uh, you know you would sort of end your career, maybe end your career as an ambassador to a, to a mid level country. Of course, political appointees would go to would you know would go to the go to the big places. The foreign service, I think, unfortunately, has become a dumping ground for um, uh, you know for 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 political patronage, uh, for you know buying people off, um, and. I, I've actually heard, let's say, new order diplomats complain about this, about how rapidly people are being, you know, are being are, are being pushed into those, um, uh, uh, into those offices, um, you know. And I don't think we, I, I, I don't, I think, as in so many things, post apartheid South Africa has not developed the the professional pu uh, public mm -hmm. service that it needs. One of the things that that you need are proper diplomats. Mm -hmm. I think I think perhaps we can close on that, having gone a little over and and uh, everything else, is that it, it's been a failure to recognise that diplomacy is very much a a professional pursuit. It's not. Um, it 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 has its very very distinct um, requirements from a professional level, and it it is never been in, in in under under an ANC government. It has not been treated. As with the professionalism that it deserved. My once again, my apologies for for the gods that deal with our um, electricity and our internet, and my apologies to my colleagues and my thanks to them for carrying the gaps. And I hope in any event, this has nevertheless managed to be of uh, of interest and the. Our host, mine host, our host, Mr. Lauren. I think that's probably the final one, Mr. Lauren. <laughs> yeah. And so. I think that, that that with that, I'm going to uh, invoke uh, invoke my uh, my privilege and seniority, and wish everyone a wonderful day. Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>